In this video, I wanted to talk about the magnitude of a vector and unit vectors. Uh, let's start out this way. In textbooks, variables, variable or unknown scalars are usually written with lowercase Latinic letters like this, A, B, K. Okay. Matrices by uppercase letters like cap A, cap B, or M. And vectors are often denoted by boldface lower letters like U or V. See how those are boldface? Well, we're, you can't really handwrite those, so uh, we're going to create a different notation that's good for handwritten vectors. And what we're going to do is just put a bar over the top of the letter designating the vector, and that will designate a vector then. Okay? Now, in previous videos, you saw that vectors could be written as, what, arrays of numbers, all right, sort of a computer science approach, or depicted geometrically as directed line segments in the Cartesian plane or Cartesian space, sort of a, a physical approach. Ideally, a geometric interpretation of vectors could be extended to even higher dimensions, though we can only think in two or three, one, two, or three. Now, let's talk about the magnitude of a vector, okay? The magnitude of a vector is a scalar associated with a vector. And we use this double bar notation in this class for the magnitude of a vector. So this would be written or read as the magnitude of u, okay, which interpreted geometrically is simply the length of the geometric vector. So the magnitude is the length. Now the key to finding the length or magnitude of a geometric vector is the Pythagorean theorem, okay? Let's take an example. Suppose u is this vector 2, 1. Let's go ahead and imagine it drawn as a directed line segment in standard position. Okay, so this is the vector 2, 1, as you can see there. Okay. Now, this means two units in the x direction, one unit in the y direction, and we end up with this uh, purple vector there. Because the x and y axes are perpendicular, and we'll use new terminology, orthogonal. That's the Greek for perpendicular. When you come to linear algebra or higher level classes, they start using the word orthogonal rather than perpendicular, but it means exactly the same thing. This is actually comes from the Greek. Okay, uh, Because x, the x and y axes are orthogonal, we can actually superimpose upon this uh, uh, vector a right triangle, and you see I've drawn that here. Okay, And in that right triangle, you notice that the vector itself is the hypotenuse of that right triangle. It's opposite the right angle. Now the two sides, because it's the vector 2, 1, the two sides are 2 units and 1 unit, respectively. To find the length of the vector then, which we will write this way, the magnitude of the vector 2, 1. To use the Pythagorean theorem, we're finding the length of the hypotenuse. So that's the square root of the sum of the squares of the lengths of the two legs. So that's actually the square root of 2 squared plus 1 squared. That's the square root of 5. So that would be the magnitude of that vector. OK, so very simple here. And we can generalize to vectors in Rn for higher dimensions then. And the idea is if u has these components, u1, u2, down to un, then the magnitude of u is the square root of the sum of the squares of those components. Okay, So take a quick example here in, let's say, R4. Let's say I had the following vector, u is... 1, negative 1, 2, 3. Then the magnitude of u would be the square root of 1 squared plus negative 1 squared. The parentheses are vital for the negative 1 there. 2 and 3. OK, put these together and do the arithmetic. It looks like 1 plus 1 plus 4 plus 9. Okay. It looks like the square root of 15. OK, very simple. OK, some properties of the magnitude. 
For all scalars k and all vectors u and v, you can prove the following. It's very easy. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. The magnitude of a scalar multiple of a vector is the absolute value of that scalar times the magnitude of the vector itself. Okay, so that's going to be very easy to prove. Notice that if k is negative here, you would indeed have to have that what? The uh, absolute value of k there would be vital. Notice that the magnitude of u, this should throw in as a primitive property, is always going to be greater than or equal to 0. Yes, it represents a length geometrically. Here's something called the triangle inequality. The magnitude of the sum of two vectors is less than or equal to the magnitude of each individual vector. By induction, you can actually extend this to a larger finite number of vectors here. But here's the idea. If you remember how to add vectors geometrically, so let's just suppose that's u. And let's say this is v coming off at an angle here. This is v. How do you add those two geometrically? Well, you start out with the initial point of u, and you would direct that towards the terminal point at v, like that. And this vector would be u plus v. OK? Now, if we change colors here just for a second, and let's have these two points here. Let's say that point is A and this point is B. OK? Now, the shortest distance between A and B would actually be, what, the magnitude of the sum of the two vectors here, because it's a straight line between those two points, right? But uh, that distance would have to be shorter than the sum of the two distances along the vectors U and V, which would be the magnitude and of U plus the magnitude of V. So the triangle inequality could be considered a way of saying that the straightest, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Let's talk about unit vectors. A vector is a unit vector if it has a magnitude of 1. Unit vectors are often written with a hat on top instead of a bar. Okay, so we said vectors, we've been writing like that with a bar. Uh, the exceptional case is if it's a unit vector, then we put this little, what we call a hat on top of it. That indicates it's a unit vector. For example, here we've got w hat. That is a unit vector. You can do this very easily. See 5 thirteenths, 12 thirteenths. That vector is actually a unit vector. Its magnitude is 1. Here's some standard, standard unit vectors for space, or i, j, k. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, respectively. Those are in the, the unit vector in the positive x, positive y, and positive z directions, respectively. And you'll often see in physics uh, vectors written in terms of i, j, and k. You can see from our arithmetic of matrices here that we could actually write the vector 2, negative 3, 4 this way. Two times one zero zero plus negative three times zero one zero, better written as minus three zero one zero plus four zero zero one, which is really just two i minus three j plus four k. Okay, so you will often see this in physics and engineering vectors being expressed this way. Okay. One little typo here from the properties of scalar multiplication with magnitude. Any non-zero vector, I should say here, not any vector, but any non-zero vector divided by its own magnitude must be a unit vector. That is easy to prove, and that is quite true. The resulting vector is parallel to the original vector and is sometimes called the direction of the vector. Okay. Now, you might mention this. Coming back up here, I should have done this before. Two vectors are parallel if they uh, are positive scalar multiples of each other and are anti-parallel if they are negative multiples of each other. All right. Now, if they're parallel, this means they have ultimately, intuitively, the same direction. And using our new definition here, they actually have the same technical direction. If they're anti-parallel, they are oppositely directed. Okay, let's come up with an example here real fast. 
Suppose I had uh, this vector v is 1, 2, 3. Its magnitude, you can see, would be 1 plus 4 plus 9. That would be, what, square root of 14. What I would call v hat is v divided by its own magnitude. And that would be this vector, 1 over the square root of 14, 2 over the square root of 14, 3 over the square root of 14. And that would be the direction of v. That would be a unit vector parallel to v.